What's up guys, Dalmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another habitual line crosser video. So I think this is the longest one we've done. Uh, four and a half minutes almost for, for what I assume was originally a short. But anyway, this is I Would Rather Be What. Uh, and it's got the 22 on the picture, so I'm not sure what, what, the, what they're saying about the 22 this time. But anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Remember, Taiwan, you are not a real nation. You will be absorbed by the Why is it so quiet? I, uh, I would not be so sure about that. Listen up, guys. And his videos have been, like, really quiet lately. No comment on that. Okay. Sorry if it's really quiet. You're going to love this. Uh, so listen up. China. Ay, ya, what do you want? I have great things over here happening in China. Suddenly realizing why you're trying to buy secrets from so many of my people. So a, a an intelligence report came out. Um, and I just thought I would share. Oh, this is for the water and the rockets. The first thing here is your nuclear weapons are full of water, not fuel. I find that really, really funny. Um, a lot of your silos that house those nuclear weapons have doors that can't open. Um, the corruption in your military industrial complex has gotten so bad. Like, there's almost no way for you to conduct any military operations within the next couple years. No. <laughs> that must have been somebody else, not that great China. <laughs> a panda's back. <laughs> read that news article. Apparently, all pandas in the world, except for Mexico, which is very strange, uh, belong to China, and they're taking them all back. Anyways, I see that. Yeah, China. They actually call it panda diplomacy, and it's it's um, they try to use it for like soft cultural power. I'm not sure how well it works because it kind like kind of just makes people think they're assholes. <laughs> This is an absolute win. I found out one of my near peer adversaries was running out of fuel 50 miles over his border in 2022. They did not run out of fuel. They were staging and having meetings for my special military operation. Yeah, and I downloaded Tinder to meet new friends. Well, and now I find out in 2024 that my other near peer adversary <laughs> isn't even close. I am way over prepared. Does this perhaps mean that you're going to cut back on military spending a little? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, what about aliens? That's a wonderful point. What if aliens... <laughs> I need to be prepared. You're insufferable. Uh-huh, uh-huh, tea and crumpets. Oh, I'm sorry, you said something. I was just signing some paperwork here through Lava Buff to get some more upgrades. <laughs> kind of my default setting. Anytime anything changes in the world, it's just authorize more upgrades for buff. Why'd you photon torpedo? Because <laughs> I told you to fucking redact that. Um, hello America. Could use some help over here. With an abundance of caution, I am listening. What do you want? So the Taliban, they've become big problem here. You mean the same Taliban that you were friends with and, and aiding and abetting the entire time I was in Afghanistan? No, these are, are different Taliban. I mean, that's kind of the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same, the our brave Mujahideen brothers. <laughs> Th those ones were good. Th these ones are bad. Look, man, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because there was a steep learning curve even for me, but all fucking Taliban. <laughs> so how about it? Just a hand for old time's sake. So if I'm to understand this correctly, you want me to help you deal with people that I was fighting for 20 years, that you were aiding and abetting, that every winter after I eliminated the dumb ones, they would run to your country, become all buddy-buddy, recruit a bunch of new idiots, and then come back in the spring and attack me. Uh, and we did this little round robin thing for, for about 20 years. Remember, I was really cool about it when you came in and got Bin Laden. You, you didn't really have a choice not to be cool about it because I didn't tell you until after the fact. But this bit. It's honestly kind of crazy that the U.S. was able to go into a nuclear, like a country that has nuclear weapons, was able to go in there and do that with them not knowing until afterwards. And that so much of that was just because the the fucking stealth helicopter crash, which is also when we found out we had stealth helicopters, which is crazy. Or I guess you guys, I'm not even American. I say we all the time, talking about American shit. It's not even mine. So what do you say? How about it? I think I speak for 20 years of American and NATO veterans that fought in Afghanistan that I would rather have intercourse with a beehive. 
than ever deal with you or the Taliban again. <laughs> there's no choice. All ethnic Afghans, go back to your country. I don't care if you were born here. You must leave Pakistan immediately. God damn it. We're not going back. I followed you in there once in a show of solidarity, and I'm not going back. It's the fucking Middle East, man. They have figured out the cheat code to get America to show up. See, they ask nicely for my help, and I tell them, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I got my own shit going on on this side of the pond. So what do they do? They create a humanitarian crisis, and then all of you look at me and say, save the world, Mr. Red, White, and Blue Man. I'm getting fucking tired of it. <laughs> yeah, and then after they're like, save the world, Mr. Red, White, and Blue Man, then they get all fucking mad. America, why did you intervene in the Middle East again? Right. 100%. If America intervened, it wouldn't even matter which side, right? The, the Israel-Hamas situation, if they intervened regardless of side in fucking 20 years, right? Everyone wants America to intervene, right? Whether they're pro-Israel or pro-Hamas, right? Stop Israel from attacking uh, the the Palestinians. Stop uh, Hamas from attacking Israel. America could intervene on either side, right? Troops on the ground, boots on the ground. It wouldn't matter which side they, they sided with. 20 years from now, everyone would be talking about how America are warmongers. The same people that want them to intervene. The same people that want them to intervene on their side if they joined their side, right? The pro-Hamas people, if they if America joined Hamas in 20 years, would be talking about how America was so evil for going in there. The pro-Israel people would be talking about how America is so e evil for going in there. It would not fucking matter, right? You, you can't win no matter what you do. It's, it's so irritating, right? It's like the, the Iraq War, right? Every, it, it's kind of funny because the Iraq War... For anyone that was alive back then, like, when it first kicked off, it was, like, one of those things where, like, you could not say anything bad about it or you were seen as, like, you fucking hate America, right? Everyone was pro-Iraq. And now, 20 years later, everyone acts like they were never pro-Iraq, right? Oh, I, you know, I was never pro-Iraq. You, you all fucking were. Every fucking one of you were. It's so irritating. The few people that weren't were basically looked at like fucking loons, but anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.